Good morning. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Good evening, family. It's hot as a freaking, freaking freak out here. So I decided to sit up under the umbrella and see if I can get a, a conversation going with my family today. They ain't talked to y'all in a little bit. So um, I wanted to make a couple videos concerning some things that uh, actually that were concerning me uh, over the week. And uh, like I said, nobody lives in a vacuum. So I'm sure some of y'all have had some of the same concerns as I've had. So let's share them, shall we? The first order of the day is, like I told y'all before, either we're going to circle the drain slowly and go down pretty slow under Hillary Clinton, or I told you we were going to zip down there real fast under President Trump. And there's a lot of people that just think Trump is really what America needs. And I suffice it to say that I believe that Donald Trump is going, is set in motion, actually, the demise of America. Um, the goal of the marionette is to get everything and have everybody divided onto himself. And so once you can do that, you basically conquer. You've already conquered a conquered people. Whether they're conquered through slavery or whether they're conquered through the idea of thinking that they're superior to somebody and in the end, it only works out good for 1% of you. Actually, John Kennedy should have showed you that. I mean, really. So basically, the puppet master has become very successful at having us all eat at one another. So, mission accomplished. Okay, mission accomplished. But this Korea and this United States business is really, really out of hand. And I would advise y'all to pay close attention to that because it's narcissism revved up on steroids. You got one of the biggest narcissists um, with the Korean leader. What's his name? Jong. Y'all know who I'm talking about. The one who killed his brother. I can't pronounce his name right now. Plus, there's a B circling the premises. And just want to make sure he stays where he's at. But obviously, you guys know the history of this crazy um, individual who is just obsessed with a basketball, which is amazing. I heard Dennis Rodman was going over there again for, for what I don't know, but I guess to entertain this uh, narcissist. And um, he allegedly had his brother killed and just, just a lot of other uh, murders that Allegedly, he's responsible for for his country. Man. So, with that being said, him meeting up with somebody who has basically sold America to the country, uh, to the Russians. America is not America as we know it. Most people are still trying to come to grab, grips with we're not a country anymore. We're a corporation registered in Delaware. So with that being said, it's just a cesspool. It can't be fixed. It cannot be fixed because it's like, you know how you go to a park and they have an outdoor pool. I mean, I'm sorry, an outdoor uh, toilet. And, you know, some of them never get cleaned or anything. They just throw some little... Uh, what they call them, like, enzyme packs down there, supposedly to kill the smell so it won't be so bad. But they can never get down there and clean all that shit out of, out of there, right? So it's a cesspool. And that's basically what America has become. And whenever a country is about to destroy itself, you can't even pick your poison because there's so many problems. And they all start with division. So it's really um, it's amazing to me because I never thought that um, 
a person like, first of all, Donald Trump could be president. But now that he's he is, um, I'm really seeing uh, the sheets and the scales have actually been cleared from my eyes. And I hope it has from your eyes as well, because we really in for a shit show, you guys. And it is narcissists on steroids. You just better remember that. The Korean leader and Donald Trump are, they don't care. They'll destroy us all. There's a, a scripture that um, reminds me of this. And I think, uh, who was it? Somebody um, referred to it. One of the comedians, I can't think of it now, but if you would go to First Kings, and I believe it's sort of like, or like third verse, third chapter, starting around the 16th verse. And it tells of this story of the two women who lived in this house and they were the only ones in the house. And a couple of days after being in the house, they both gave birth. One gave birth one day, the other birth gave birth another day. And with that, within that birth, um, there was no other people in the house. And I believe these were prostitutes, if I remember the story correctly. And my daughter gave me an analogy. I don't know where she got it from. Like I said, I think she said so she heard it on some show. But I had to go back and read the scripture because it was so relevant. And that verse stated how both of the women slept that night with the baby. And one of the harlots rolled over on her baby and killed it. And got up and exchanged the dead baby for the other baby that was suckling at the mother's breast. It's right there. Look at it. Um. I think it's first kings and it's third chapter and it starts at the 16th verse and when you read that um they had to go before the king for him so what happened is the, the lady that lost the baby took the baby the live baby and took it to her room and then took the place the dead baby with the other one so when morning came the woman woke up she felt the dead baby and she assumed her baby had died until she looked at the baby in the face and she said, this is not my baby. And, of course, she went to the room of the other harlot and the other harlot had a baby that was alive. And she recognized the baby as hers. So let me get through the story. And so what she says to the other woman is, you got my baby. And the woman said, no, this is not your baby. This is my baby. So they went before the king. And the king decided... Okay, I tell you what. Well, let's split the baby in half. And you take one half of the baby. Um, you take the other half. Because both of y'all claiming that this is your baby. That's the only punishment I can think. Well, the mother, rightfully, who gave birth no, to the baby, said, oh, no. No, 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 no. She can have the baby. Even though it was her child, she would rather see her child live, of course, than to be split down the middle. And the other woman who lost the baby, whose baby was dead, said, no, no, no. Let's cut the baby down in half. Let's settle it once and for all. We'll split the baby down the middle. And the king right then and there made the decision. He said, no, no. Give the baby to the other woman because this must be your child. Because anybody that would want just to split the child down the middle just so they could have their way is insane. And that's how I feel about the Republicans and these people that are, um, whatever they call themselves, whatever label and a division that they have on themselves, the Republicans. But they'd rather split the baby down the middle. Hmm. Just kill it all. Then to be fair. Then to understand that either we're going to live together. We don't got to love each other and invite each other to each other's birthday party if we don't want to. But as Americans, um, 
if we can't find no common ground, it's all over. Well, here comes the ambulance, so I'm going to shut up. Actually, the fire truck. So I thought it was an interesting analogy. Paramedics. <coughs> I think it's a very interesting analogy. And the king made the decision because he realized that there are some people that they don't care. Let's just forget it. Burn it all down. Oh well. All right, you guys. Like what you hear. Please like, subscribe. See you next time in the mental house.